Long before fire was tamed, or tools were crafted, before the first words were ever spoken, there lived a creature that stood at the edge of two worlds, between ape and human. Her name was Australopithecus. She walked upright, just like we do, but her brain was smaller than a chimpanzee's. She climbed trees to escape predators, yet wandered open plains in search of food. She was no longer just an ape, but not yet human. A bridge species teetering on the line of evolution. The most famous of her kind? A tiny fossil found in Ethiopia in 1974. She would be called Lucy after the Beatles' song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was playing in the camp the night she was discovered. Lucy stood only about 3.5 feet tall and weighed around 60 pounds, but her bones told a revolutionary story. She walked upright, not knuckle walking like gorillas, but bipedal like us. This single detail would rewrite the history of human evolution, though we may never know how they thought or what they felt. Their fossilized footprints, like the 3.6 million year old trail in Latoli, Tanzania, tell us this. They walked together, side by side, and each step pushed evolution forward. Australopithecus would eventually vanish from the earth, but they were never truly lost. Their legacy lives in every footstep we take. Because before we were human, we were them. Around 2.4 million years ago, the winds of evolution stirred once more. A new kind of being emerged in the African savanna, still primitive, still wild, but something was different. This wasn't just another ape-like ancestor. This was Homo habilis, handyman the first true human. Why that name? Because Habilis could do something no creature before him had mastered. He could create. He chipped stones into sharp flakes, used broken rocks as knives, scrapers, and hammers. Simple tools, yes, but revolutionary. With these humble shards of stone, he unlocked a new way of life. Dead animals weren't just food for scavengers anymore. They were opportunities. With tools, Habilis could strip flesh from bone, crack open marrow-rich centers, access nutrition that no other predator had touched. And with food came fuel for the body and for the brain. Homo habilis wasn't big, around four feet tall with long arms and a small frame. But inside his skull, a quiet miracle was taking place. His brain was growing significantly larger than Australopithecus, more neurons, more complexity, the dawn of curiosity, problem solving, even planning. They still lived in small groups, still feared predators, still had no fire, no homes, no speech as we know it. But they had something even more powerful, ingenuity. Picture it, the dry African plains, a group huddled beneath a thorny tree. In one hand, a rock. In the other, the stripped down carcass of a zebra. Not a scene of savagery, but of adaptation, of evolution, learning to think. For the first time in history, a creature wasn't just surviving. He was reshaping the world around him. Homo habilis wouldn't last forever, but he lit a spark that would never die from chipped stones to space travel, that spark still burns in us. Roughly 1.9 million years ago, the Earth was changing, and so were its inhabitants. Grasslands stretched wide across Africa. Predators grew larger, prey faster, climates harsher. But among them stood a new kind of human, taller, smarter, bolder. They were called Homo erectus, upright man, and they would become the longest living human species in history. Homo erectus was unlike anything the world had seen. For the first time, a human stood at nearly six feet tall, 
with long legs built for walking. And walk they did, not just through Africa, but out of it. They crossed rivers, traversed forests, climbed mountains. They spread into Asia, into Europe. They were the first humans to leave Africa, venturing into unknown worlds. But what truly set them apart was fire. Yes, Homo erectus tamed flame. In caves blackened by ancient smoke, we find the evidence. Charred bones, ash layers, stone hearths. They didn't just survive the cold, they conquered it. Fire meant warmth, light, protection from predators. It meant cooking, which unlocked more nutrition from food and powered their ever-growing brains. They made hand axes, symmetrical, sharp, designed with intention. Not random flakes like Homo habilis, but tools with vision. Each one a glimpse into a thinking mind. And they hunted in groups. They may have coordinated, communicated. We'll never know their words, but their actions speak across the ages. They were social beings, bound by more than instinct. Imagine a scene, a windy plain, the sun setting orange on the horizon. A group of erectus gathers around a small fire, their tools laid out, a freshly hunted antelope roasting. They aren't just surviving, they're thriving. For nearly two million years, Homo erectus endured, longer than any human species, even us. They saw ice ages come and go. They adapted, migrated, evolved. And in the silence of time, they gave rise to everything that followed. They weren't just wanderers of the earth. They were the ones who opened the world. As Homo erectus spread across continents, time carved new branches in the human family tree. In Europe and Western Asia, a rugged cold world gave rise to one of the most iconic of our relatives, Homo neanderthalensis, the Neanderthals. They weren't the brutish cavemen of old cartoons. They were intelligent, adaptable, and profoundly human in many ways. Neanderthals made tools that rivaled ours. They used fire, wore clothing, hunted mammoths with strategy. They cared for their injured and even buried their dead. Some left behind cave paintings, jewelry, and carved symbols. Their bodies were built for the Ice Age, short, stocky frames, powerful muscles, and brains just as large, if not larger, than ours. For hundreds of thousands of years, they thrived, but their time was ticking. Meanwhile, far to the south, in Africa, a new chapter was being written. About 300,000 years ago, a new species emerged. Lean, agile, with high foreheads oh, and a spark so behind the eyes. We call them Homo sapiens, wise human, us. We spread rapidly out of Africa, across continents. And when we met our Neanderthal cousins in Europe and Asia, we didn't just compete, we interbred. Today, many people still carry traces of Neanderthal DNA, a living echo of ancient encounters. But around 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals disappeared. Why? Climate change? Competition? Disease? No one knows for sure. All that remained was us. So Homo sapiens built complex societies. We painted the walls of caves in France 30,000 years ago. We sang, danced, told stories. We planted seeds. We built cities. We reached for the stars. But we are not separate from what came before. Every step we take today was first taken by Australopithecus. Every tool in our hands shaped by Homo habilis. Every journey Every fire, every idea, lit first by Homo erectus and Neanderthals. We are not alone in our story. We are the latest verse in an ancient song. We are the only humans left on Earth. But we were never the first. Our story is one of survival, of memory, of footsteps stretching millions of years into the past. If you felt a spark while walking through time with us, 
a connection to Lucy, to fire makers, to Neanderthal hands that once carved stone. Then don't let their story be forgotten. Subscribe to explore more untold worlds from our ancient earth. Comment. Which early human species fascinated you the most? Like if you believe history didn't start with cities, but with the wilderness. Share this with someone who needs to know where we truly came from. This is just the beginning. Because to understand who we are today, we must remember who we were.